So let's discuss the different parts of um, the ventricles. So that's your left lateral ventricle, that's your right lateral ventricle. Okay, so you can see the lateral ventricles are either side inside the um, cranial cavity, essentially. So what fills this, these uh, lateral ventricles? Okay, perfect. So you're going to have cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid is going to fill these. So the, what essentially happens next is the lateral ventricles, where are they going to go next? Okay, great. So they're going to go to the third ventricle. Okay, so this is the third ventricle. So what is the hole that it goes to to get to the third ventricle? Okay, so that's going to be called your foramen of Munro. After it's gone through the foramen of Munro, it enters the third ventricle. And then after the third ventricle, what does it go through then? Okay, so that's where it's going to go through your cerebral aqueduct. So third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct. Then at this point, as we were then going to enter the fourth ventricle. Okay, so the fourth ventricle is down here. So when it enters the fourth ventricle, it then can go through three foramen. So do you know the names of those foramen? Okay, so they're going to be called your um, foramen of Magendi and your foramen of Lushka. So there's one Magendi, so one midline foramen, but there's two lateral foramens, and they're going to be called the foramen um, of Lushka. Where does it enter then after the fourth ventricle? Okay, so that's going to be your subarachnoid space. So that's perfect. It's going to enter your subarachnoid space. So certain parts of the CSF pathway are going to be narrow. So what happens if, for example, we have a six-month-old boy and we're going to block, okay? So we're blocking the cerebral aqueduct. What could happen? Okay, so essentially what you're going to get is if you block the cerebral aqueduct, the third and the lateral ventricle are going to start to swell. Why is that? Well, what happens in the lateral and the third ventricle? Okay, well, that is essentially where you're going to be producing your cerebrospinal fluid. So you produce the cerebrospinal fluid via um, an area called your choroid plexus. Okay, so your choroid plexus is where essentially you've got your capillary loops coming downwards. And these capillary loops, what they're going to be doing is having blood that are going to be going through them and the capillary loops themselves are covered by what kind of cells? Okay, so the capillary loops are covered by epidymal cells. Now the epidymal cells are what are going to be taking the blood and essentially um, forming the cerebrospinal fluid, which is a substrate and a filtrate essentially of blood. So cerebrospinal fluid is going to be containing glucose, oxygen, vitamins and ions essentially and that is going to be made by your epidymal cells. Now the epidymal cells and the cord plexuses are roughly about 70% located in the lateral ventricles and roughly about 30% or so in the third ventricles. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe and share this video. Like it if you like it. If you don't like it, then don't like it. And then uh, subscribe if you want more videos. We upload videos regularly. So if you sub subscribe to the channel, you can get a notification and the video will appear in your inbox. And if you hit the uh, bell button as well, then you can get the notifications for this as well.